Hello and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and I'm coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark where I live with my partner, my little girl and a big baby bump. Um, so as always I'm out of breath and on top of that I have had a cold for the last weeks. Um, a really terrible cough. Uh, so I just tried to record this episode, this uh, intro twice, and every time I started coughing. So I hope I can get through this. I have tea as always, and I have some fisherman's friend. <laughs> so in case it gets really bad, I might be taking one of these just to soothe my throat. Um, but apart from all that, this is a knitting podcast, and. And today there will be some sewing, so I'm really excited about that because I love sewing, but I haven't been talking much about sewing, um, just because it hasn't been happening for some time. So there are some sewing projects. Mm. And um, yes, uh, last time I podcasted, I kind of said it would be the last podcast for a while because my due date was uh, approaching. And my due date was yesterday, which uh, I was kind of expecting to be very uneventful, um, and it was, nothing happened. I just, last time I went, this is my second child, so last time I went uh, four days past my due date before anything happened. And I just, a due date is just the date they put on the paper to have something to work out from so I was really relaxed about it but it also means I just we have been trying to get everything ready before the due date and we have kind of managed so I'm really excited about that most things are as I want them a few things are not but I just thought today I'm home alone so I thought it would be I just want to relax and try to not get too much in my head because uh, as it's my second child I know a little bit about what to expect from the birth and if I start thinking too much about it I just get a little nervous or anxious and I just want to be as relaxed as possible because there's no way around it and yeah I try to I was I spent the morning knitting and I just thought why not record a podcast to just talk to someone <laughs> uh, and I really wanted to because I finished up a lot of little projects for the baby in the last days leading up to the due date that didn't really yeah nothing really happened and um, so I thought to show these and just chat a bit about knitting and whatever comes to my mind so this will be a very relaxed episode I'm wearing my boyfriend's uh, jumper so I'm not really dressed up or anything uh, oh, and I probably get some questions. So I'm also wearing this shawl from, and I've been wearing it in most of my Vlogmas episodes that I was doing during December. I wear this pretty much every time I go out uh, because it's a very nice thick wool from uh, Sneldan. And Sneldan is a fairy's wool or yarn, but made from fairy's sheep. And uh, this is a pattern by B Mandarins or Melody Huffman, and it's called the first shawl. And I knit this sometime last year and it's just the, the most warm and comfortable thing. And right now I'm upstairs in uh, the workspace we are trying to create up here. As you can see, I also put up this little closet with yarn and books. You cannot see it, but and I have my mannequin up now and my spinning wheel, which I haven't used because I just got it really cheap and it's old and it needs some uh, love and attention. Mm. But I figured that I just, it's just so pretty. I don't know if you can see that I cannot do too much. It's an old Ashford traditional and it was really cheap. So I just got it and maybe someday I have time to, to work on that. Um, yeah, I have my workspace and the plan is to get a couch up here as well somewhere. So I could also sit and knit up here a little more comfortable because right now it's just desks and stuff. And what was I saying with that? Yeah, I'm up here upstairs and it's quite chilly because it's windy outside, it's cold. 
way around a few degrees only and so i need something warm also for my sore throat um yeah but it's a lovely shawl that's what i was trying to say um yeah i as i said i have a lot of uh, finished objects that are tiny baby knits so I'll just get to them i've been knitting on some teeny tiny socks that i just bunched up and um i got some i showed them on instagram as i said last episode if you want to follow along with me uh, instagram is the best way because it's the easiest for me it doesn't take much time and i can do the stories in no time um so my instagram stories are generally a little less curated or thought through whereas i like to think a little bit more about the pictures and have beautiful pictures on my instagram feed but but the, yeah the pictures are just uh, the stories are just where i show what i'm working on so first i made these oh it's blowing out a little bit there you go um these little socks and they are the baby bin sock pattern which is a free pattern and it only comes in the newborn size as far as i know but you can make them longer they're quite stretchy because you do a I don't know if it's gonna help um, because you do the two by two ribbing all the way down to the heel and then to the toes in the front um, on the top of the foot and you can make them as long as or as short as you like I shortened these from the pattern just because I want them to fit immediately uh, and they are knit with um, the Lana Grossa tweed yarn that I've been talking about and showing here on the podcast this is the natural colorway. I don't know exactly if it has a name. It's They don't have that many colors, so there's one natural. Um, and I just love the tweed. I don't know if it's gonna show on camera. Um, and for the heel and the toe, I used some leftover yarn that I had from uh, a skein. I made the simple skip socks a long time ago, and it's a B BFL. Uh, hand dyed yarn from my mama knits i think she's called on etsy but she doesn't seems like she has a sh uh, website now i will try to link everything down below let's see <laughs> if i have time to edit this afterwards um i feel very much like i'm working on like i don't know what's gonna happen in the next hour so i'm really careful not to promise too much anyways i made two and they're just so tiny um did it, did it and cute and the ribbing will make sure they stay up so i'm really happy about that and you can just cuff them and they're really sweet so after i did this one pair i thought okay i'm just gonna keep going and i made a second pair uh, and these are made with another lana grossa that i ordered in the same order this is not a tweed yarn let's see if it will focus on the sock it's a phone it doesn't really does what it wants to do um it's a sock yarn that has like a tweedy effect but it's not like actual tweed nubs i don't know if i have it here oh yeah here you can see the white one and the white one has like the the specs the how are they call the dun the nubs they're actually extra pieces of fleece spun into the yarn whereas this one is just colored so it looks like a hand dyed ish yarn and it's the same heel but i didn't do the toes just because i didn't feel like weaving in the ends <laughs> um there's a lot of weaving in ends on such a little pair of socks if you're doing them with contrasting toes and heels um and these ones i made a little bit longer it's because i want them to go on top of onesies and stuff um so Two little pairs they're really easy to make it's a free pattern and it's actually really well explained oh so um then i oh and they're by barbara prime so but you can find them on ravelry and you have to uh, go to her website and she has it explained there so very easy to follow and then what i finished is uh, this romper that i showed you i think i showed when i was just at the beginning down here and it looked very messy 
because I'm I made this out of recycled yarn. Yeah, here you can see pretty well. Color is perhaps a bit darker, but I'm working with the light I've got. It's a very gloomy day, and this is and this color is a khaki with the uh, little pinks and blue and yellow specks and I reclaimed the yarn from an old sweater my mom had from a shop called Noa Noa here in Denmark. No, oh, I feel my voice is so nasal, I'm sorry. Um, and I, yeah, I had just worked up until here. I did a few modifications on this pattern. It's the Little Brothers Rumper by Petit Knits. And this is the smallest size, so the zero to three months or zero to two months, I don't remember. I just wanted something he could wear straight away. Um, and yeah, it's an easy pattern to follow, nothing there, but I did a few modifications just for taste. Uh, I put the second buttonhole. Uh, I did an SSK instead of a knit two together. I think I didn't double check, so maybe I just read it wrong but it's just to get them in the same place and up here um i didn't do i did one less pearl or gather uh, stitch here and here and on the other side just to get it a little rounder because if not it's very square here and i prefer the look of that and i did the same here so on the first row you're supposed to do gather stitch when you are here i just did one stitch less on each side and then the full amount afterwards and uh, I don't know if I did anything I think I did something else but I can't remember and I just got some buttons at the local yarn store nothing fancy and so this is a free free yarn free project uh, and it didn't take long to make as it's knit on a it's a fairly chunky yarn and after I washed it and blocked it you can see it's um, looking much better I don't know if I have I had it somewhere here <coughs> the yarn it was very kinky from being in a sweater for a long time it's a wool silk blend so that's why I thought it was worth saving and yeah nothing else to say about that it's ready for the little guy um, yeah what else um, and from also Petit Knits, which is not a finished, it's a finished object, but I've, I have already shown it. I have this one that I made, it's the Anka Sponnet. It's just a bunch of baby patterns and they're not that expensive and really easy to make. And this one I will bring to the hospital, in the hospital bag. So I just wanted to show you one more time. This will be his first little bonnet. And yeah, I'm, I already packed the, the hospital bag, so I unpacked it right now and just took out the things or unpacked it. I took out a few items to show you. Um, another one of the items that I have shown you, but I just finished putting in the elastic, is this little pair of, um, of bloomers. Uh, and this is just, I just came up with the pattern. I didn't really, I looked at a pair of baby pants and made up the pattern but it has a folded uh, edge and I put in an elastic um, so that's pretty much what I did since I showed you the last time nothing else but these are also in his little um, hospital bag in case it's really cold I want to be able to have something to put on the outside of of his clothes oh yeah and they're really soft and squishy these are knit out of um, a drops yarn that I had in stash for a long time it's kind of a pain to knit with. Uh, it's an alpaca with a lot of this loopy kind of yarn and I would not recommend it, but it looks really sweet afterwards. And, and you know how I feel about drops if you watched this podcast before. Uh, if you haven't, I would, yeah, you have to go back some episodes where I talk a bit more about it. I don't want to get into that now. Um, but these are also in the hospital bag. There's a lot of little items that are, they're really cute. And um, I have one more thing that I just pulled out of the bag because I thought I could show it. Oh, let me. And I have one more thing that I thought I would just show you that I pulled out of the bag. This one I actually made three years ago for my daughter when she was born. Three years and five months or something like that. They will be apart. And this is a small cardigan. Uh, that has this flap system to keep them extra warm on the belly 
Um, it's the cardigan from Pickles. Uh, it's a Norwegian yarn and design brand. I mean, they have the patterns and their own yarn. And there's also a shop in Oslo. Anyways, uh, they used to have their patterns for free in one of the sizes. And this one was for free in the newborn size. And this is when I started, it was back when I started getting more um, serious about knitting or like interested with when, when I was expecting my daughter I wanted to make a lot of things for her but I was still really on the cheap side so if I could get free patterns that was like how I went with things or cheaper yarn and I wasn't knitting was not really a passion at that point it was more like a practical thing I think it's more like I see sewing at the moment I wanted the items but I didn't want to spend a lot of money or time especially so anyways I made this one for her but she was born in August and she never wore it it was way too warm and she was a very warm baby or maybe she wore it once um I think I held the yarn double or maybe not but I uh, it should still be on the website anyways about pickles it uh, it was one of the websites I really that opened my eyes for more patterns and something a bit different so I'm really happy about that um and this cardigan is so nice and squishy so I can't wait to finally use it um and I put on blue buttons at that time uh, I think I made it before I knew the gender and for me gender is not the colors gender colors are not that important but it's kind of fitting for the little guy I think there's yeah there are a few buttons on the inside as well so you can open it uh, and I have a row of buttons here and the other row of buttons here and you just you can close it inside and outside so i'm looking forward to getting to use this one and and they have a lot of baby patterns if you are interested in knitting stuff for babies and where to find baby patterns i talked a lot about uh, for my tiny knit scale uh, some time ago i started talking about uh, doing an episode more on baby knits and to be honest it's probably not gonna happen or maybe it will happen when I've used the, some of the stuff again and just feel a bit more uh, into the whole baby knit uh, topic but what I can say is I always recommend this style uh, where you don't have anything I mean you can have buttons in the front when they're really small but once they start lying on the belly, it's not nice with buttons in the front uh, or in the back. For that matter, I've seen things with buttons in the back. And also for the romper, there are, there are some romper or baby pants patterns out there that I just simply wouldn't use because they have either legs, but are, are not. you can't open them in the bottom. And this <laughs> will save your life when you have to change a lot of diapers or there's an explosion or something so I will always recommend something that can be opened at the bottom opened at the top it's easy to get in and out of get the baby in and out of and just think about if you're making it for a bigger size the more buttons you have on the back and the front the more they're gonna lie on those buttons so something very easy is good for example for baby bloomers it doesn't really matter that you cannot open it here because they're so easy to pull down but when it's a romper and you have it closed it's really a lifesaver that you can open them so there are patterns i just go i i don't want to do because they have they're not easy access to the baby they can be really cute but in the end when you have to when you're sleep deprived and you are trying to get through the day and or whatever you just want it to be easy you're changing so many diapers in the beginning um i remember for my firstborn i made a lot of cute little patterns and uh, like items and it's nice but i didn't they were not the ones being the most used and i think you should have fun with it you should enjoy making a few things just for the just to have yeah to have fun and and get excited but to be more realistic probably you need some more practical pieces um and in the beginning unless you're going out a lot they will be living in their pyjamas, um, at least that's my experience, so oh, yeah, just make the things that make you happy, but I'm trying to say from my perspective and from what, uh, yeah, what we use the most, 
it's just practical pieces uh, that are easy to get on and off. Of course, it's also nice if you can wash them. So I understand why people tend to use superwash for baby knits, but I didn't feel it was such a big deal hand washing these little things. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It didn't bother me that much. I just... That's up to you. I mean, if it if you know it bothers you, then don't use pure wool. If you're giving it away, of course, you would like to use some. You should use something else. <sighs> Trying not to get too much out of breath. Um, yes, I have a few items I want to talk about now that we are at the finished items, and also um, that are baby related. Um, so I will go into finished objects not all are new um, and then later I will talk about my works in progress one of the things I made for my daughter that I had so much fun with is this little collection of teddy bears and I absolutely love them um, I didn't use a pattern this is my own invention kind of thing and they are so easy to make you just need some scrap and if you're not used to sew you can hand sew them I think I hand sewed some parts and others not so they are pretty much I, I i have another one of this but i cannot find it little guy they're just little squares that i i sew together two little squares one for the face one for the body and then i made the ears that are folded over so they're like a little pocket so you can see the the contrasting these are really old fabric i had lying around this is just some sheets i think um, and then what I did is I, 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 I sewed around and I left a little hole open with all this inside. And that's the only tricky part, but you could do it by hand. And then I folded it inside out, stuffed it and closed it up. And I embroidered these little faces, just eyes, a little mouth, in this case, like a little uh, Mifi. Mifi, I don't think she's called Mifi in English or it's a Dutch bunny. Um, yeah, and I put on some makeup, like some, uh, how you call it, I never used that. I got it sometimes because I thought, oh, you have to have that, especially when I was younger and trying out makeup. And my cheeks are always red anyway, so there's no point in using blush. Blush is the word. But I had some blush, like little samples and stuff, and I, you can put it on the teddy bears. Um, so I just made them with left scrap fabrics. Uh, this guy has little flower fabric on the ears and I love when you fold the ears they're just two pieces sewn together but when you fold them over I don't know if you can see you get a little glimpse of the fabric and yeah they have stuffing in the feet and in the body but not in the ears and you could also make them like little um uh, how you call them flower uh, with dried flowers like dried lavenders how you call them oh they have I know they have a word um yeah so these are little guys this is the teddy bear oh, it's not helping on the light and i embroidered some yarn on his nose so he has a more fluffy nose and the little fox which i also think is cute he has pointy ears the other one have this is the bunny bunny and the and i don't know if my daughter really played a lot with these but i just had so much fun making them and you know that's what i said you can make things just remember they're maybe more for yourself than for the actual baby. Uh, and then I made the long one, which was meant to be more for the baby to hold on to. They like to have these long limbs. So again, it's just a square piece of fabric, but I I think I hand stitched this part onto the white. Um, and a little bit pointy is this. Uh, I stuffed the ears. Uh, so yeah, and I sew on the arms just so they can move. All the way around um, and the legs are... anyways I just really enjoyed making these and these are the kind of things you can ha they, they don't cost anything it's just time but you can do it on the sofa because they're just you can hand stitch them and stuff and they're just so sweet look the big guy can hold on to all the little guys so things I made last time uh, when I had a lot of time <laughs> to make baby stuff uh, but they're gonna be used for the little guy. Let's see if he wants to has more interest in them oh. And It's probably gonna be a longer episode because I just pulled out so many baby things um, 
Oh, yeah, of course. So, uh, last time I also made a cover for the um, nursing pillow. And you can see the woodland theme is kind of something I like. And it fits, I think, both boys and girls. So I didn't really have... I, I didn't make any pink stuff for my girl last time. And it means I can reuse everything. Again, you can put a boy in pink, I don't mind, but I, I sometimes think it can get very stereotypical, gender specific, and I like these in between. Um, but what I made this time for him, so he got something for him too, which is a baby nest. <laughs> it's really hard to show on camera, but it's pretty much this boat-like, um, it looks, it reminds me of a, like an inflatable boat. Uh, Oh, yeah, so uh, you just you have the bottom which is uh, stuffed uh, with some uh, I had some very thick uh, bedding I used for a quilt quilted blanket and then in here I put stuffing from pillows so just pillow stuffing that's why it's looking a little soft uh, and lumpy and I used double gauze and double gauze is very soft and and nice but it it also means it's not keeping the shape so well so it's a little more soft looking and on top here you have um by some bias tape uh, and you put a string into to tie it all together and i posted a picture on instagram i got some questions on where the pattern is from so i just start to show it a little more in detail um it was very easy to sew, except, I mean, some parts are a little tricky because they're just fiddly, but not complicated. Uh, I used the pattern from Stuff and Steel, which is a Danish uh, fabric shop, but I know you have it in different countries, at least in the Scandinavian countries. They have it, I think, in Germany as well. Um, and I don't know if you can order from the website, but they have a pattern um, for the... Excuse me. <laughs> They have a pattern for this baby nest and um yeah i when i was unsure about a few parts so i looked up on youtube if i could find just a tutorial just to see how you put it together and i found a few tutorials just looking for baby nests and they have measurements and i'm pretty sure if you google google you can find measurements for baby nest like this one it's a very simple construction so if you cannot get it from that shop or you just want to do it the cheap way um, i'm sure you can find some kind of recipes for baby nests online um yeah and i'm i'm gonna it's, i'm gonna use it on the uh, if he's lying in the bed for example between us there's a little more safety for him not to get oh how you say like it's easier to know where he is. He will stay in the in the spot and on the couch, for example. Um, so that's the main plan to use it in areas where there's a little more room. And I just want him to have some kind of safety. And I know some children really like it for the um, the they feel more like closed in, uh, more secure, like when you wrap them. Or um, uh, another thing we used a lot for my daughter that I'm sure we're gonna use again is the baby hammock um, and we really love that one and they, it has the same kind of cuddly uh, hug like effect and babies really like that actually that one fits really well with this blanket which i made also for my daughter last time um, so i just wanted to show it uh, i accidentally accidentally felted it a little bit because I had read you could put it's hundred percent wool and or wool alpaca something like that and you could I read you could just use the spin cycle and the machine but what I didn't know is the, <laughs> the machine was set up to wash and spin or like um, rinse and spin so I started rinsing and it was just terrible because it was not doing what it was supposed to so it started to felt it a little bit which resulted in this very thick and actually very nice um, blanket i think it's a little thicker it's a little smaller than I, what i intended but it doesn't really matter i think you can see the felting a little bit here but i don't remember if i pulled it out because i got nervous or what i did but felting has a purpose too i just it's still soft so it has some drape 
and this blanket fits really well with the colors of the the baby nest so it seems to be a little bit of a grillo theme although i'm not like it's not my color preference but it's it's nice for the baby i think um i mean i like this yellow and i like the gray it's just i'm not crazy about grillo as some people are or um, yeah it's a free pattern from the beer tinker which is a blog and it's a Danish blog and I don't know if it has any English translations, but it's very simple. I think there's a chart and you can just, if you see the Castan numbers, so Castan works on Gata, um, Gata Ridges, Ridge, blah, 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 blah. works on Gata and then you just do these uh, knit and pearl um, triangles. And yeah, I think there's a little chart, so you just follow as long as you want and this one i made last time so i had a lot of baby blankets i didn't make any baby blankets for this little guy um i thought about it but i just have other things i really want to work on so oh and from the leftovers i made a little teething toy uh the ring i think is from the same shop and they had this pattern but i was like i'm not gonna buy a pattern for this <laughs> And so simple, it's just pretty much a long, um, yeah, a long piece. Now it looks really wrinkled. Uh, you just make a long piece, like with this bunny ear shape. And since I didn't have a long enough piece, I just uh, sewed two pieces together. I really want to try to not have too much waste uh, and reuse the things when I sew and so on. And you just end up with this. Okay, so I just keep getting messages. It's my phone and my partner is at a meeting and now he's, I think he's freaking out that I'm not answering because <laughs> I, yeah, we were supposed to keep in touch if anything happens. So I will just pause for a moment, answer him and get back to you. Okay, I just texted him back that um, no, nothing happening. Actually, the belly is really quiet, but I think that's just... They can sometimes be really quiet before it really starts, things start to happen. Um, yes, let's move on to some more works in progress. And I have some yarn I want to talk about as well at the end. And some cows. Um, but let's do the, the one that is a baby knit first. And then I promise there are no more baby knits. Um, I'm sorry if you're not interested in baby knits, but that's kind of what my everything is going around actually i'm working on a lot of uh, adult things too but i know this time is special it's probably i don't know if we will have any more babies i just really want to enjoy doing all the little tiny things and talk about them too so um i'm working on a pattern from this book which i also used for my daughter quite a lot it's by Line holme samsø and it's called baby knit on size three millimeters. So everything is on size three for this one. And the pattern I'm making is, where is it? Here. So I'm making this little cardigan, uh, which is like a little grandpa style cardigan. And there's a picture of a little guy wearing it. Here you go. Um, and I wanted to use the uh, Geilsk tweed yarn that I got uh, a little earlier this year or last year because we we already in 2019 um but what I didn't realize is it is uh to get this ribbing ribbing effect you're doing knit two purl two and then on the next row you're doing your uh, yeah like moving it one stitch to the side and it's very nice, but it's knit to pearl to all the time on both sides. And I'm going insane. I mean, it's not the thing I want to work on the most, let's be honest. But now I cast it on, it's for the smallest size. And I really want to try to have him wear it. If not, it's going to be a present or I have to start over. Let's see what happens. Um, and it's on small needles, so it's a little scrunched up. But it's fun to, I don't want to say it's fun to work on. It's okay to work on. I really like the yarn. It's very beautiful, tweedy, charcoal gray, and it's soft. Uh, it's very similar to the Retro Saria yarn. I think it's spun the same place, very similar yarn. So if you are interested in that, uh, 
and yeah it's just I don't know what's gonna happen with this one maybe I will it seems a little big and I know her sizes especially since this book is a bit older um what happens is I find with older I mean it's not old but it's from when is it from 2013 no maybe 2013 and I just find that little older patterns tend to have more ease um, and this one is the same I find there's a lot of ease so I could easily just probably use this size and make it a bit longer in arms and body and it would still fit um, for, for a bigger size and I think that's what I'm gonna do just not to start over again uh, so that's a work in progress just just another baby knit. Um, I'm on the stool. That's not very comfortable, but it just was the easiest thing to find up here. Um, I am working on some shawls. So let's talk about the shawls. Uh, first one, I have shown you just a little bit. So this is a little sneak peek. Um, it's I'm working from this very beautiful, oh, the color is showing up nicely now. Uh, beautiful yarn. It's hand dyed by Molview Yarn. Um, I got this at EYF. It's a, a dyed with sage, I think, and lac or something like that. But it's just like little pops, pops of pink every now and then. I will try to show you in the fabric what it looks like without giving too much away from the pattern but you can see every once in a while there's a little bit of pink here there's some more but um so it's just a shawl design i've been working on and again this is for next year probably um but i just really felt like working on it i keep coming back to it the yarn is so soft and beautiful it's the wells mule four ply uh, i have two skeins so i'm still on the first one and i have a skein somewhere um that i will I will use all of it that's the plan and see how much shawl i can get from two skeins um and yeah i'm just enjoying that one a lot ripping back a bit trying something out trying different things to get the shape that i want um but it's in no hurry which is nice not to be hurrying too much and then i have well since this one is on top i'm gonna talk about this one first I have my waiting for Henry socks. Um, I have I had kind of left them for some time working on the other little things, and then I just realized I really wanted to finish them while waiting for my little guy. Uh, he's not gonna be Henry, but since we still haven't uh, settled on a name, um, we have some names on a list, but I want to see him first. Uh, I have to see if the name fits and my partner and everyone agrees. Um, I mean, my daughter, she, I don't know what, what her plan is, but whenever we ask her, she's like, he should be called um, truck or something <laughs> like that. And I'm not really sure. She keeps calling, saying Grauko uh, Meskine, which is like, I don't know how that's called, like a, the one with the big shovel. Um, I don't know. She has her ideas of names is a little funny. So anyways, I wanted to be working on the socks. I have finished the calf. I just finished the heel on the second one. Uh, no, I finished the heel last time, I think, but I turned the heel and I'm just working on the foot. And as you can see, I'm really close to being done. I actually tried to finish it before this, but I was like, I'm not going to sit. Because then I end up podcasting too late and it's not going to happen. Um, so I just need to do a little more foot and the, the toes. Uh, I talked about the modifications in the last episode. I cast on one size bigger up here and I decreased uh, down to 60 stitches or so 64 up here, 60 stitches here just to have a little more, um, uh, not, not, not to have negative ease in the color work because that never looks nice. So you can see here's the color work and I used the, the yarn that I showed before. This is the Lana Grossa Tweed. I used it in the black color in the cream. And they have a, this rust cinnamon color, which I think is very nice. Um, so yeah, I did a, an eye of partridge heel also on the bottom, which I never done before, but I just kept doing it and it worked out nicely. So it's a very squishy heel. 
and the toes I think are according to the pattern everything else except from the ribbing is according to the pattern this is a two by two so yeah I really like these I can't wait to wear them because they have this nice squishy long cuff and normally I'm too lazy to make a long cuff if it's just vanilla socks they always get shorter than I actually want I love long cuffs because I just I'm too lazy so these ones kind of forces you to I mean I could have started the heel here but I, I wanted to have a little bit of body before the heel or leg uh, yeah um, and it's just a nice yarn with a little bit of life because of the the specks or the knobs so I'm very happy about that uh, anything else to say I don't think oh yeah it's a pattern by Tabitha Gandhi yeah if I remember correctly uh, she's a part of the Hey Sister Yarn Co yarn company and podcast I talked about them last time as well they're wonderful sisters doing a podcast and they have this hand dyeing yarn company and she writes up patterns I don't think her sister does I think only she does um, she has another sock pattern coming out that looks really interesting and I just really wanted to make these so here they are I hope to finish them before the baby comes <laughs> that's the plan uh, but they're good waiting waiting for baby socks um, yes and the last thing that I'm actively working on at the moment. Oh, I have to go, by the way. I can show you because I just found the ball. This is the Lana Grassa that I made the baby socks in. So here you can see it has some orangey specks. That's why I did the heel. And the color is this. Yeah, and they are called rustico this one so i can put that one back i have to go get my second um work in progress which is part of a cal so i will just go and find that because i packed it in my hospital bag and i have to see if i can pull it out from there so just one moment so i'm back with um this one which is uh the Hedge Witch, Hedge Witch, Hedge Witch, um, shawl by Nat, who is also wool and wool and fun. I have to see my old notes. They're also in here. She is <laughs> wool and fun. Yes. Um, I uh, yeah. Um, I'm totally lost. Sorry, my brain is really on pregnancy mode. Um, Nicole from The Gentle Knitter and Sarah from Fiber Track, two lovely ladies with beautiful podcasts that you should all go and watch, are uh, doing a cow, a knit along for this shawl, which is the Hedge Witch shawl. And I talked about it in length on both my Make Nine and on my last podcast. So, you can go and watch it there. I just wanted to show a bit of the progress. I am not working on this super fast. Um, I'm working in my the yarn I had spun up for my parents' Godland sheep and um, reached this size. <laughs> I am not knitting super f quickly on it or working on it all the time, just because it's kind of a mindless knit. Um, right now, there's nothing else happening than I mean, all the rows are the same, so you are increasing and you're doing this very nice textured pattern. Um, so it's kind of the thing I want to knit on when I'm really tired and just want to knit on something easy. That's why it's in my hospital bag in case I have to stay at the hospital for one or two days after uh, because of some observation they want to do. Um, so I have this here. Uh, but I don't really feel like knitting on it when I'm I have when I'm more in the mood for something interesting, I'm not gonna pick this one up at the moment. It's a nice knit. I'm not complaining about the pattern or anything. It's just one of those more mindless knits that that I want I don't I don't know. <laughs> I really try I feel like I know that things will change in a it can be hours, it can be days, and so I'm really I'm really cherishing my, my, how 
would just say that I have the time and I have the brain space and I have the energy to work on something a little more complicated. So that's why I'm working more on my other shawl that is a design where I have to think a little bit more because I know that very soon I probably won't have really brain space for thinking. So this one is uh, good for for that. And I'm just, I'm not, I haven't lost steam on it. I'm just not really, I'm saving it for when I have those moments. That's what I'm saying. Um, so it's in my hospital bag and I have to remember to put everything back into the hospital bags after this. Uh, I think that's all uh, for my works in progress. I wanted to talk a little bit about some yarns. So I got some yarn mail, very excitingly, from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, <laughs> uh, when I did the episode about uh, Tweet Yarn and my love for Tweet Yarn, uh, she said if she could send, yeah, she asked if she could send me a skein of some of her Tweet Yarn. It's her Ren base. Uh, yeah, house wren, it's called. Um, and she makes very beautiful tweed. Uh, yeah, she's dying on tweed yarn and has beautiful colors. And I really love um, sweet spare yarn. Julie is a sweetheart. She has a podcast as well. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, this is her little label. And so I picked out this one, um, which is the Blackberry Moose. And it's absolutely gorgeous colorway you can see it has some darker parts some lighter parts it's super soft and i um i think it's too beautiful to use for socks but probably i will knit socks or maybe i will use it for something else but it's a very beautiful yarn um so she sent me this to try out and i'm really happy thank you julie but she also sent me, because then she keeps posting pictures on her Instagram, and she has, I mean, her colorways are really amazing. And she finally got some non-superwash yarn, or she has had it for some time, but non-superwash sock yarn. And she posted a picture of these three. So this is in her uh, espresso colorway. And it's a very beautiful tonal brown. This is just a creamy white, very nice and soft. And this is the Cameo colorway, uh, which is this warm pink. And uh, I love it so much. Um, and I have a plan for these three, uh, a little design in mind that I was actually, yeah, I have had for some time. And I think it will be, uh, beautiful in these yarns so this won't happen anytime soon as well but she sent it to me and it's lovely and I can't wait to work with this um, non-superwash fingering yarn and it is uh, the styling base so if you're interested in non-superwash she has other yarn thick yarn weights or thicknesses uh, in non-superwash and she has superwash as well so I got this with the mail um, and because she had a de-stash <laughs> and I knew I was getting a package from her. Let me just see if I can uh, find it because I put all the things down next to me. Um, so she had a de-stash of this wonderful yarn, which is Knit Picks uh, City Tweed DK. And I just thought it was a very beautiful color. It's um, uh, merino wool 55% and 25% super fine alpaca and 20% Donegal tweed and I love this kind of dark burgundy whiny red and um, and I have so much of this yarn I mean this is just some um, she had a huge amount of for sale and actually I, I did it was too much but then I just thought okay let me just get it all get it off Julie's hands and um I have a bunch of these and I can't wait to make something with it. I don't know if it's going to be one project, but I think, for example, the Little Brothers Rumper would be very nice in this color as well. So I'm thinking if I should make him make another one in this one. And um, yeah, I, we don't really nitpicks for those in the States is very, it seems like a lot of podcasts use nitpicks, but for us in Europe, it's shipping and customs and all that is always so expensive 
Um, so I just never tried it or had any idea and it seems very soft and lovely and I like that it's a uh, yeah it's it's a non super wash as well right hand wash dry flat I imagine it's non super wash if it doesn't say super wash and um, it's the one called blue blood and it is very beautiful so I'm looking forward to having this in my stash and to maybe do some big cardigan in this or it seems light so it should be nice. More Tweed yarn. <laughs> I'm never getting tired of Tweed yarn. It's terrible. It's terrible. But I love this color. And I think it's a color that suits me. Um, so it's nice to have some different colors in my wardrobe. Uh, yes. So that was the yarn I got in the mail. And I have... Uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about regarding yarn. Um, so the last bit of this podcast is just going to be uh, administrative or like little information about things. So let me pause for a second and get that. Okay, so um, here I have two skeins and I just brought both skeins because uh, just so you can see a bit of a color difference in dye batches. So this is absolutely amazing yarn oh, it's blowing out yeah here you go the color over here is probably a bit more accurate it's this pinkish gray beautiful beautiful yarn uh, with a lot of very subtle um, color variegation or like depth in the yarn uh, it is from woolly mammoth fibers and it's the yarn i used to make my nerea sweater Nerea sweater is a design I will have in Lane or Line magazine issue 7 coming out on February 15th uh, this year and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> I will tell the whole story once I have the magazine and I can show you. Um, they will send me the magazine uh, from Line. Uh, very soon they're sending it first they have to print it i think today they're sending it into print so uh, once it's been printed i will get a copy and then i can show you a little bit more talk about it i won't have the sample which of course would be more fun to show you um but the sample is in finland and gonna go on tour without me which i'm very sad about uh, but what i want the reason why i wanted to talk about the yarn a little bit and there's a whole fun story behind this yarn, which I will tell you in details because uh, there were a lot of trouble to get this yarn to me. That's also why I have two dye baths and or dye lots and stuff. Anyways, this is an extremely beautiful BFL Massam yarn. So it's 75% BFL, Blue Face Leicester, 25% Massam. Uh, it's so spun and made in the UK. Um, it's 100 grams per 240 meters and so it's a DK weight and it's dyed by wonderfully talented beautiful Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fibers which is okay let's see it Woolly Mammoth Fibers uh, Fiber Co and it's the colorway peony um, but as when you're doing natural dye there will be some very variations in the in the dyeing so that's why i just thought it was funny i have these two different you can see this one is lighter that's pretty much it it's it's same, still the same color um but what i wanted to say about this is emma has uh, opened pre-orders so you can get a sweater's quantity of this yarn for the sweater um the nerea sweater that will be in the magazine uh, and i can only this yarn was just a perfect perfect match for this sweater i think the the stitch definition is beautiful without being too harsh i i'm not one for very hard spun like worsted spun or very tightly spun yarn generally there are some exceptions um so at least in sweaters because then you get this really nice stitch definition but i sometimes like something a little more fussy <laughs> And this one just for me was the perfect amount of stitch definition and f soft, uh, soft looking. It's a two ply. It's a two ply, right? I think it's a two ply. Yeah, it looks like a two ply. 
um, but it's just perfect I think so it was I was so happy a lot of trouble to get this yarn to me but it was so worth it and the color is so worth it and it's a very soft and luxurious yarn I was when I was winding it up I do the winding by hand into balls I was just ah I kept writing Emma that I just ah it's so beautiful and so soft and very nice yarn I highly recommend it and so you can go to her Instagram and she has a story about it um, and probably also a blog post uh, and I will talk more about the design when it's ready or when the magazine is ready but it was a perfect uh, match between beautiful yarn and an idea I had that worked out exactly as I hoped for um, so yeah Emma's yarn and I have only two more things to talk about which is the cal, um, the cals. I have the tiny knit cal running, and I don't have a deadline, and I don't have prices put up. By the way, I got some messages on prices, and uh, it's um, if you write me on Instagram, I will lose the message in about in a very short time because I get so many. If I post a story, I get messages, and then they just bury bury the um, bury the the message and i cannot find them again there's no system on instagram at least not that i have found out to to search for emails or to keep it keep track you cannot put them in folders so in case you wrote me about prices or anything along those lines and please can you send it again but send it to my email um i will have my email address in the down by this time I just don't normally post it because I don't want it to be spam, but I guess my my design email address is for for you to be able to contact me. Um, and generally, if you have any questions on patterns, in the end of my patterns, there's always a section with my email address and where you can find me. And email is the best if you want to be sure I don't lose the mail. Ravelry is okay as well, but again, um, it tends to get buried it's not the best system to keep track uh, so really yeah please send me anything to my email um what was i saying tiny knits cal yeah in, i because i know a few people wrote me with yarn and that they wanted to donate for the cal and it's just gone i cannot find the emails and i feel really bad okay um tiny knits cal it's running we're doing baby stuff it's fun I just love seeing all your finished objects. Uh, it's mainly finished objects because they're so fast to knit. There's not a lot of progress happening. Um, I mean, the, the progress thread is a little more quiet than the finished object thread because people just, yeah, you start them and you finish them in no time. And then there's the Hüleberg, um cal for this shawl. That's over here on my mannequin. And it's uh, one, the last pattern I, released um, before going on maternity leave and it is um, yeah there's a cal running and in the cal thread there's a lot of help regarding there were some problems with the links to the youtube videos i have them private because they explain some parts of the pattern and unfortunately they didn't, don't always work when people want to open them i checked it again and from my computer there are no problems but when I open the PDF, I can just copy them into the um, document or into the browse search bar. Um, but it seems like it's not easy for everyone or there's some issues. Anyways, there's some help to get there. And I know a few of um, one of my testers, um, she, hello, <laughs> she, um, Marie Chloe. I'm not good with French, sorry, but she offered to help really generously while I'm away because as I expect, I will probably not answer a lot in the next weeks and so on. Uh, so yeah, join there. It's a lot of fun also to see how the projects um, look and just talk to the others doing the same, um, some modifications and so on. So there's some help to get there. And I think that's all for this. Uh, I don't want to stop talking because I know that kind of means it's over <laughs> for now. But I uh, I was really happy that I had a little extra time to sit down and talk. And I will edit this and try to see if I can get it up. That might be the only problem, getting it out there. 
before anything happens. But um, yeah, I'm. It was really lovely to chat, and I will see you all sometime. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Look at this ball. It's huge. <laughs>